Animal Crossing New Horizons is the big Nintendo Switch game for the month of March. A lot of people are looking forward to this game. It's been a long time since we've seen a proper new Animal Crossing game, so fans are getting very excited for this game. But over the past few weeks, there's been a bit of controversy building around Animal Crossing New Horizons. Some things are being talked about with this game that a lot of people aren't really liking, and a lot of people aren't understanding why this is a thing. So in today's video, I basically want to talk about what all the controversy is surrounding Animal Crossing new horizons and why some people are upset by this and will it sort of make a difference at the end what's going on guys I'm RGT 85 if this is your first time on the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and without any further ado sit back relax and let's talk about Animal Crossing new horizons and all the controversy surrounding it now this may come as a bit of a shock to you, but I actually like the Animal Crossing series. And my Animal Crossing stuff definitely started out with the GameCube version of that game. I absolutely loved Animal Crossing on the GameCube. I got so addicted to that game, and I'm not even really sure why, because it wasn't really that sort of style of game that I was really into, but it definitely introduced me into a new world of games, and I really enjoyed that game. I loved having to find the NES games. That was one of the coolest things about Animal Crossing on the GameCube was finding various NES games and then playing them in your little house that you were of course building up and trying to pay off your debt on this house so that you owned it completely. It was like an adult simulator almost. You know, you buy a house, you pay off your house, you play video games in your house, but just the world of Animal Crossing was just so interesting to me. I specifically remember one time hanging out with a group of friends and it was like 11.30 and I was like, yo, I gotta go. And they were like, why? And I was like, I gotta go see this concert. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I literally loved left my group of friends to go home and watch a KK Slider concert that was happening at midnight. Like, that's how much invested I got into Animal Crossing on the GameCube. But I would say my peak of Animal Crossing love definitely came with the DS version of the game. I felt like they added in so many new things and so many cool things to do in that version of the game. And plus, it was a handheld version of the game, so you could play it wherever you went. I remember I had a shrine of Metroid built in my house in Animal Crossing on the DS with all these Metroid statues and stuff. There was so much cool stuff. Yes, they did take away the NES game aspect, which did kind of suck a bit, but I felt like they added in enough stuff into Animal Crossing on the DS that I just absolutely loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic, and it was just such a fun and addicting game, and that's where a lot of people's love of Animal Crossing comes from are the original two games. Now, of course, Animal Crossing saw a release on the Wii. I played that game, but I never really got super into it like I did with the other Animal Crossing games because I felt like they just didn't do enough to sort of differentiate those games. It felt a bit like fan service, which was cool, but I wanted to see more of an evolution with the game. And honestly, I never played the 3DS version of Animal Crossing either. I just sort of moved on to other things. And then of course on the Wii U, we got an Animal Crossing game. Kind of. We got Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival because, you know, screw a mainline Animal Crossing game. That, that's not what people want on Nintendo's first HD console. They want an Amiibo Festival, something to use all of their Amiibo that were hot at the time. Look, it was a cash grab. I think everybody knows that. Nintendo was losing faith in the Wii U, so it didn't really make sense to do a full-on traditional Animal Crossing game on there. But still, people, people didn't like Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Nobody wanted Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Nintendo just wanted to line their pockets pockets a little bit. I get it. I get it, but I don't have to like it. So when Animal Crossing New Horizons was announced for the Switch, I was like, finally, we have a proper HD Animal Crossing game and a more powerful system so that you could do things that you couldn't do on the GameCube or the DS or the Wii or the 3DS. You can really sort of expand upon the game and everything that we've seen so far from the mainline game, I think looks pretty good. I think they've included enough new stuff in this game to make it interesting for veterans of the series and make it enticing for newcomers of the series. Obviously, the whole big thing now is that you're on an island. There's a crafting system where you could do a lot of different things with crafting, which I think will really sort of open up the game. It seems like they're including a lot more things you can do to sort of customize your house, customize the layout of the island as far as traversing the island. I honestly feel like there's still a lot of secrets going on with Animal Crossing New Horizons as far as the gameplay is concerned, as far as what you'll be able to do on this island. I think there's going to be a lot of fun stuff here, a lot of new stuff added in, and I think there's going 
gonna be a lot of fan service in this game as well. So I'm pretty confident in the core game of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Of course, the Animal Crossing series sells exponentially well no matter what system it's been on. So what's the controversy surrounding Animal Crossing New Horizons? If the core game seems good, and of course it is an expansion of the Animal Crossing universe, what's really the problem going on with this? Well, we've been learning some things about Animal Crossing New Horizons over the past few weeks, and more and more things seem to be coming out about this, with Nintendo just making some very strange decisions that a lot of people are not liking with this, and I can definitely sort of see why. Now, the first thing we learned about was there was going to be no cross-platform saves. You won't be able to transfer your user and save data between consoles with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, obviously, that's sort of a big deal because of the fact that people have something called a Nintendo Switch Lite. Many people own two Nintendo Switch consoles nowadays. I know I do. I have a Nintendo Switch that I use primarily as a dock system in order to get things like gameplay footage when I'm doing reviews. And then I also have my Nintendo Switch Lite, which I like to take with me on the go whenever I'm going out of town or I'm going to stay somewhere or do something. I want to bring my Nintendo Switch Lite and leave my main Nintendo Switch at home. Now, transferring save data between your Nintendo Switch and your Nintendo Switch Lite is a pain in the ass to begin with in the first place. It's something we talked about in my Nintendo Switch Lite review, and I just did not like how cumbersome it was to transfer data from one system to another system, especially considering the fact that I want to have two systems. Now, maybe I'm in the minority with that. Maybe I'm not the intended audience with that, but I do feel like it's something Nintendo should have taken into account. And the fact that you can't do it with Animal Crossing, which is obviously a game that you're not going to sort of play, you know, for hours and hours. It's more of a game that you play on your own time in little spurts, just seems very strange. And a lot of people didn't like that. Now, the next situation, of course, I think was a bigger situation for a lot of people. And that's talking about the islands itself. Now, this was actually discovered through some German marketing material by my buddy Don Koopman. Hope you're doing well, Don. But in this promotional material, it basically said the following. Please note, only one island can exist per Nintendo Switch console, irrespective of the number of users registered to or copies of the game used on one console. One Nintendo Switch and one copy of the game is required for each unique island. So basically what that means is no matter how many users you have on your Nintendo Switch, no matter how many people you have living in your household, you will only be able to have one island per Nintendo Switch console and per game. Now it doesn't really affect me personally because I am a single individual, but there are people out there with families who kids will want to play this game. Maybe dad wants to have his own island, but if he wants to have his own island, he'll have to buy his own copy of the game. What happens if a booty call comes over and they want to stay the night and you're like, all right, yeah, it's late, whatever. And they're like, oh, what's that? And you're like, oh, it's my Nintendo Switch. And they're like, oh, do you have that Animal Crossing game? I want to play that. Are you going to let your booty call run around on your island and mess things up? Possibly tear down structures, tear up weeds, chop down that tree that's in your village? No, you don't want to deal with that. So that is a very, very questionable decision. If you want to have multiple islands in your household, you have to have multiple Nintendo Switch units and multiple copies of the game. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people are upset by that. And I could definitely see why. Like I said, it doesn't really affect me personally. I don't want people touching my Nintendo Switch to begin with. But if I had kids or something like that, I would want my kids or my significant other to have their own little island that they can play on and they can do their own sort of thing on it. So that was a decision that a lot of people definitely took to heart with Animal Crossing for the Nintendo Switch. But the final decision was actually learned about just a few hours ago. And this is definitely a situation that has a lot of people questioning what Nintendo is doing. And it of course has to do with cloud saves. Now to be fair, Nintendo has done some questionable things with cloud saves in the past. The main game of course being Splatoon 2. Now Splatoon 2 was not a game that allowed for cloud saves for Nintendo Switch Online owners. And the reasoning behind that was of course because of the leaderboard system that Splatoon 2 had. So Splatoon 2 does have that sort of competitive th thing to it. They didn't want people messing with the leaderboards even though people with hacked Nintendo Switches ended up messing with the leaderboards anyways. But now it looks like there's a whole situation going on with cloud saves. At first, there wasn't going to be any cloud saves whatsoever was the rumor, but now they've sort of clarified this on Nintendo of Japan's website, and it's just, it, it, it makes no sense. So the translation is as follows. This game does not support Nintendo Switch Cloud so the translation is as follows. This game does not support Nintendo Switch Online cloud saves, but we are currently looking into a customized method for backing save data up that will be specific to this game in the event that your Nintendo Switch is damaged or lost. The function will be limited to Nintendo Switch Online subscribers. The timing of implementation is undecided and will be announced as soon as it is finalized. 
Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I lose something or damage something, it's usually something that just happens. It's not like I plan to lose my keys or I plan to lose a game or something like that. It's just sort of something that happens. So how is Nintendo going to differentiate whether or not you broke your system on purpose? Did you really break your system? Did you really lose your system? Like, why make this so cumbersome? Animal Crossing has no competitive aspect to it. So there's no benefit in being able to do things like this, even if they added in a competitive aspect. Like, what could it possibly be that people are out there like, I need to be number one in Animal Crossing on these leaderboards? Like, come on, Nintendo. You're making this way too difficult for people that have multiple people living in their household. You're making this way too difficult for people who have multiple Nintendo Switch units. You're making this way too difficult by not allowing for cloud save data. Now, I don't think any of this is going to impact the mainline game. I think people are still going to enjoy the game, and I think people are going to be respectful. I don't think this is a situation is going to be as big as something like the Pokemon Sword and Shield controversy, which at the end of the day, I mean, it's still selling, you know, over 16 million copies. So obviously it wasn't that big of a deal, but it's definitely something that is troublesome with this. Nintendo could have made this very, very simple when it comes to Animal Crossing New Horizons, but it seems like they're putting up these little barricades that are making it difficult for people with multiple people in their household, for people with multiple Nintendo Switch units, or God forbid you lose your Nintendo Switch, you lose everything on it, and then you're just sort of up shit's creek without a paddle. So I just don't get it. I don't get why Nintendo makes these decisions especially with paying customers of the Nintendo Switch Online service who should be able to have access to cloud saves for all of their games. Yes, even competitive games, folks. But I don't know. It's definitely very troubling to see all this. Obviously, like I said, it's not going to impact me quite as much as it will others, but it's something that I wanted to talk about because I feel like it's just kind of getting swept under the rug a bit. There are some channels out there that are talking about it, but more people need to be concerned about things like this and maybe be a bit outspoken. Of course, you could be respectful when you're being outspoken, but Nintendo Nintendo needs to know that things like this aren't acceptable, especially in 2020 and with a big game like Animal Crossing New Horizons. I love being able to take my Nintendo DS cartridge that I've had for over a decade now and I can play it on any Nintendo DS system I have, a Nintendo DS, a DSi, a DS Lite, a 3DS, everything is on the cartridge. Why couldn't Nintendo do something similar with this version of the game? But I don't know. I want to hear what you guys have to say about the Animal Crossing controversy going on with New Horizons. Is any of this stuff going to sort of impact? your decision to pick it up especially if you have a significant other who likes to play games with you or kids who like to play games as well and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later